wings um, up tight in there against the final cotton body that we'll build here in a moment. Take that thread off. Now uh, I'm going to check the rest of the body. There's just a tiny bit of fat that I can pull away very easily on the skin. This bird was not very fat at all, tiny amounts. Um, but what I need to do is clean out that tail, because at the base of the tail, on the top side, I should say when you do need to scrape off fat, you scrape it with the grain of the feathers. The feathers are all lying pointed this way on the other side of the skin. If I scrape this way, I won't uh, get caught against their bases as they insert against the skin, and I won't be making holes. So I'm scraping basically from from the rear end of the bird toward the front end of the bird is how you want to scrape when you're scraping fat. Again, there's just a little bit of it, but we're going to get it off. Fat causes a, a, a skin to deteriorate with time, and you really do want to get as much of it out of there as you can. It becomes acidic and makes the skin brittle. It can also seep out onto the label and make it illegible, especially if you don't use a proper ink. Okay, I'm scraping away right where the cloaca comes out, carefully removing all of the tissue there. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the top side of the tail and excise what's called the uropygial gland. It's the preen gland, or the gland that produces oil that the bird uses to uh, groom and preen its own feathers. It gives waterproofing and has antibacterial properties, and is also very fatty. There's a bone between the tail feathers that uh, we can partly get out, but I'm basically cutting that bone free from the tail, and then have to put a little dust on there to absorb those fluids and to give me a little grip to pull that small pie style, it's a very small bone, out from between those feathers. That feather base now looks clean. It's, it's imperative to get that clean. That's where insects will come in and begin to eat a bird wherever you've left small amounts of flesh. And you can see a little sheen of the oils from the fat that I just removed. Put a little bit more uh, dust in there to absorb that. And that skin is basically clean on the inside, ready to turn back inside right. We'll rotate the wing uh, skin again and feathers so that those primaries line up as we, as we uh, evert the skin. So that they'll lie fairly naturally again when it's back inside right. Now, now that I'm turning the bird inside right, I want to get that corn cob dust, that absorbent, out of my way so that it uh, doesn't get stuck up in the plumage. I might mention that corn cob dust, you can use sawdust, but it, in birds like owls, the um, burrs from that dust will get caught up in the plumage very badly and it's hard to get it out. I'm turning the head inside right. Getting so I can grab that bill and pull it free. Hmm. Sometimes they're stubborn. It'll come. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. There's a little bit of maybe just from the freezer fluid that uh, caused these feathers to get a little gummed up. It's not body fluid. I can tell by feeling it's not sticky. It's not discoloring. I'll give it what I call a dry wash. This cob dust, when it's clean, uh, is invaluable for drying a bird. Uh, there was quite a bit of frost in the bag on this bird, and, and, and I think that's what that is. It's um, water from simply from thawing. That dust is really good, cob dust is really good for uh, keeping fluids from uh, getting into the plumage, but also in uh, if you do have to wash and dry them to get it dry again and get those feathers back up and give them a good loft. Okay.
That skin is ready to reassemble, and we'll go ahead and do that. We've got the tissues uh, saved down in the freezer. Lay the bird out. We'll start out by making an eyeball. Take a decent quality of cotton, and we roll an eye that's going to be about the size of the eye in the, in the uh, carcass itself, the original eye. Those, of course, are substantially larger than the eye looks from the outside. Put that up the neck, and we will insert it carefully into the skull. You can see that eyeball. It's a little freeze-dried, a little, and there's some tissue that's showing there, but um, that's one eye. Second eye. Right beside the first. Now, you'll remember that we cut out half the skull. So, while those eyes are sitting there perfectly well now, they won't sit there long unless we build up the back of that skull that we removed. I like to um, put something in there that's going to hold those eyeballs right where I left them. So I build up a bit of a skull and I aim a piece of cotton right up between those pieces of, of cotton that we've put in for the eyes. It can't be too large because we're going to put a stick in in a moment as an artificial base for our body that will uh, fill out the bottom side of the skull and we need to access the, the bill itself. We'll close that bill in a moment, but that's a rebuilt skull by putting in eyes and the skull itself of cotton. Next we'll take a pointed stick, use that as the basis for the building of a body. Um, we can again can use the carcass as a model, but we're going to uh, roughly make that same body shape. I've just got scraps of cotton. Uh, for birds of this size, it's nice to use up some of the cotton in the lab. I use a little bit of moisture to moisten the stick, and then I begin to simply wrap on a cotton body. These are very small scraps. put moisture on there so that body holds still while we're uh, shaping and maneuvering it. It'll of course dry quite quite well. Now, bird bodies are narrow above and wide below. You can see that shape on the uh, carcass which we're trying to roughly duplicate doesn't have to be exact. Bird plumage is very forgiving, both when you accidentally make holes and when you may have, for example, a lumpy body. But it's also, it's good to get symmetrical. So we've got a fairly symmetrical body. I'm going to now manipulate that cotton, massage it a bit so that we have a genuine back to the body and a, um, a shape that's a bit like what we've just taken out. Next, I will put my forceps up the neck to pilot that sharp, pointy stick to the uh, base of the bill where we'll then insert that point. Okay, so the forceps are piloting that, that uh, hole that the body needs to go, or the stick needs to go into. I'll insert that like that. And then you can see the point of the stick emerging from there. I will then insert that into the very base of the bill so that now that body is anchored at the top and then it will become anchored uh, throughout the rest of the skin by sewing this up in a moment. Okay, now I'm simply drawing the skin up over 
the um, cotton body that we've made. 